Today on Woodman Web Training, we are going to go over modifying trend extensions. This would be a situation where you have an existing trend. Uh, see previous, uh, previous videos showing how to make trend extensions or how to add trend extensions. But you have an existing one in there that isn't isn't trending fast enough or is trending too fast and filling up memory or you're not getting a long enough time span for what you want to be able to see. So I've logged into a system at our office here and I'm going to go to a controller that I've added some extensions on. I'm going to use our new furnace in the office and under the space temp here I've previously added a few trend extensions. One the numeric interval, uh, that's been in there for quite some time. And I'm going to go through the trend extension information here fairly quickly. To get to this information, you're going to need to have a password level that logs you in as a default user or a super user, so you're able to see all this information. Otherwise, this tree on the left-hand side will not be available in the web interface. Um, all, everything you see here will look the same in the web interface, except you may have to hit Enter, or there'll be a Save button down here at the bottom. So a numeric interval, as I've discussed in previous, uh, tr previous trainings, a numeric interval is exactly that. Every so many minutes or seconds, we're going to take a trend sample of this space temperature. So our status for this numeric interval is on, which means it's or OK, which means it's uh, recording and working. There is no fault. It's enabled active period of the day. In this case, we're running this one all the time. I always want to be recording. If you had something where you only wanted to trend a room when people are in it, you could make that only occupied or only uh, active you know, Monday through Friday. History naming. Um, I went through this in a previous episode as well. Uh, Parent.parent.name. So parent is right here. The second parent is right here, and the name of that is office. And then parent.name is the name right here, space temp office. So when you see the trend, you're going to see office, comma, space, space temp office. Uh, the history config, this is the part I wanted to get into for this class. Um, the history config is how this is recording and how this information is being saved on the JACE controller or the EC boss, uh, depending on what kind of uh, Niagara controller you have. Let's go down here because this is going to be about the only part that's going to be changed is capacity. In this case, this controller is going to take a record count, which means every time it takes a trend sample, currently our temperature is 71.81 degrees, every time it takes a trend sample, it's going to add one. So if you have a numeric interval of 15 minutes, it's going to be 15 minutes times 500 samples. That's how long you're going to have for a trend for a trend history. So if you make it one hour and 500, you're going to have 500 hours worth of data. Um, since it's set up to roll, it's going to just lop off. Once we hit 500, it's going to lop off the oldest trend to add the newest trend. It's a rolling uh, rolling running thing. Uh, the interval is regular. It's set for 15 minutes. Again, that can be changed. In most cases, what, what an owner is going to want to change is going to be the record count and how it works. So if we want it to stop, like there's a particular amount of data we want to get on just Thursday, uh, we may want to set this trend up to start. And we know that 500 intervals is going to get us all the information we want. And we want it to stop so it doesn't overwrite our old information. Uh, you could set it that way. That would be a pretty irregular way of doing it. Or you can set them up for unlimited. Now I'm going to caution against unlimited unless you're using a web supervisor to offload this, these trends to. Unlimited will fill up the memory of the controller and it will eventually quit working. And just like your computer, if it runs out of memory, they just get really slow and don't work well. So I would suggest not using the unlimited function unless you're offloading this information, which you can, up to a web supervisor. Uh, so for config history, this is all we're doing to change it. We can change role, regular, whatever it might be. I'm going to leave this one alone right now. I've set up another one. The COV, if you were going to change a COV, this one works exactly the same information here, record counts and roll. The difference is, is it's not taking a log every 15 minutes. This one's doing it based on a change tolerance. And in this case, my change tolerance I have set is 0.01 degrees. So anytime, like what that just did, it changed right there. Uh, it's going to take a trend because it changed by more than 0 0.01 degrees. Now, this is a great option if you're if you want to set a change tolerance and you don't care too much about only seeing one degree resolution or half a degree resolution. The space temperatures don't change very much, so you'll end up getting 500 records, but it'll take you a longer period of time to get there. 
Now, if I set this at 0 0.01 or 0 0.001, that temperature is going to fluctuate, or maybe a space pressure is going to fluctuate a lot, and you can fill up that record count in just a few minutes. Um, the last thing I wanted to show is I created a trend here. This is called numeric interval fast, and I just named it testing trend. Um, there's really nothing in here except that I'm doing a trend every one second, and I wanted to show the one thing that happens when you make these changes. If we go back to the uh, the history manager here, at the bottom I have a testing trend, which I've logged on here. And you can see here's our testing trend. If I make a change to my testing trend, so I'm going to change this to be a 5 second interval instead of a 1 second interval, um, since we have now changed the trend, it is not uh, we're not logging, so if you imagine one straight line going from point A to point B, and we change the history in the middle of that, uh, the tritium system doesn't uh, doesn't keep that on the same trend. It has to create essentially a backup for it. So since we did that, it's going to create a new spot, and on these systems now you're going to see testing trend and testing trend config zero, and what it's done is it's taken the trend information that it already had renamed it to config zero and then started a new trend that has testing trend uh, it, with our new five second time interval instead of our instead of our one second interval so we don't have any information here yet but what you would see is a line of one of one sensor or one trend history and then it'll switch over and go to the next trend history so there'll be a gap in time um, so that's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't hurt anything. Everything will continue on going, and you don't lose any of your old histories. They're just not available on the graph you're looking at. So anyway, I hope that has cleared up how to make trend history extension changes. If you have any questions, please contact Woodman Control.